I'm with Salima Ramadan from Ipco, Palestine. Salima, what is Ipco, Palestine? Well, I'll start by the word itself. Ibtikar is another word for innovation in Arabic. Ibtikar is a small organization that have started only a couple of years ago. And uh, it emerged through the efforts of uh, four people who decided that we want to do something different from what the local organizations and international organizations are doing here in Palestine. We tried to put our efforts together to introduce our Palestinian people to the so-called the SDGs and try to find solutions to some complex problems that we are living on a daily basis. I know that the um, these resources are in a way or another restricted here in Palestine, but knowledge is attainable and should be available for everyone. And this is what we are trying to do. What's the mission of the organization? Well, the mission of the organization is, it's a very wide one, I know, but it's, yes, in a way or another, giving some sort of knowledge about the SDGs to the Palestinian people from different ages in order to put them on the first, to give them the first step to find solutions to the problems that we are living. And what programs do you run here? Yes, this is also a wide definition, if I can say. We are talking about social problems, economic problems, and all other types of problems. I know this is a very ambitious vision, if you'd like to put it this way, but nothing is impossible if you try to give people the knowledge, or try not literally giving them the knowledge, but mentoring them to be able to find knowledge. Is there a lot of talent here in Palestine that just needs leadership and direction? Yes, actually, I think that because of the very harsh conditions that we are living on a daily basis, people are thinking outside the box, but also from inside the box, and they have great solutions to some local and regional and international problems. They lack the courage to expose their solutions to the people, but also they lack the resources. So what we are trying to do is the first thing, for example, that we do with people is that we work with them on the so-called creative confidence. It's about being enough confident to say what the creative ideas that I have. Sometimes might be a great idea, but I might not reflect to it as being creative. So we try to tell people that, yes, every idea that comes to your mind is creative as soon as you are able to implement it in a creative way that will serve your community, but also serve you as a person in the first place. Uh, there's a lot of Palestinians who actually leave the land, so will this actually help people to stay here in the land? I have some friends who had to leave the country because they did not find the good soil to start their projects. Some people go to Ramallah because they think that the environment there is more encouraging to start their ideas. The same happened to a high percentage of the Palestinian youth who leave Palestine because they think that there is no way to live here and you know have a decent life. I think that when we will be reaching the point when collaboration will happen between Ibtikar the Palestinian PA, the PA in general, I mean, and other Palestinian organizations and international ones who are serving the Palestinian people, we could reach to the ambitious goal that you are talking about. Mm. This needs lots of collaboration. I cannot say that Ibtikar will, for example, decrease the uh, percentage of people who are leaving the land, but when we reach the point when collaboration will happen, yes, we will be able to start achieving part of this goal. Uh, do you work in schools at all? Yes, of course. One of the main targeted group of Ibtikar are students, school students, because we think that this is where knowledge starts. So we work with Palestinian students, we work with teachers, and we work with parents because the circle should be complete. You cannot work with a student and increase the gap between him and his teacher or her teacher. At the same time, we work with, with parents who should also or could also be an encouraging source of encouragement for the student to think in a creative way. And what sort of things do you do in the schools? Training programs for students. For example, last year we had a six-month training program that was funded by Kinder USA. It's an organization that supported us from the beginning, and we could train dozens of students, but also work with teachers. The workshops were separate for students and for the teachers, but we were working with them for the aim of you know, getting the students out of the textbook because here at uh, the Palestinian schools, I'm sure you know that we are only restricting our thoughts, our minds, to what's within the textbook. And this is binding the students from being change agents of the society. So what we are trying to do is that we tell the student, yes, this is the basic that you need to know, the textbook, 
But the horizon is very wide. You can think openly. And we work with them on these mechanisms. And then we work with the teachers because based on some studies that I personally did for my master's study, but also for studies that we did for Ibtikar, teachers take the job of being a teacher only to secure their life and to secure a monthly payment. And they easily get fed up of what they are doing because there is no way of renewing what they give and they are restricted to finish the textbook, the curriculum. They cannot come up with ideas that might benefit them on their uh, job life, if it's good to say this, and for the students also. So for the teachers that we have worked with, we try to make the classroom a place of innovation for them and for the students themselves. By the way, this program is being duplicated and we have started a new version of it this year, uh, last February. We are currently recruiting the students and the teachers to take part in the training program that will start directly after Ramadan. Is this changing education? This is hopefully changing education. We are starting with a small scale of students and teachers, but I'm sure that the effort will be duplicated and multiplied because this is how things start. We start small and then we start to grow. Are you trying to inspire young Palestinians, but do Palestinians in general have a, like a victim mentality because of the conflict? Yeah, this is very much in line with my personal thoughts, actually, because as Palestinians, we try all the time, I think, from my personal point of view, that we have, we got used to the idea of being victims and we like the role of being victims. But in reality, and for someone who knows Palestinians and who is part of the Palestinian community for a long time, you can judge and you can be certain that Palestinians have a lot to give for themselves and for the world. But unfortunately, the presence of some international organizations, also local organizations who are misusing the Palestinian image and try to get money from the international donors and the international community by victimizing the Palestinian people and you know, screening them as people who need help. While they have, while Palestinians, I think, have great energies and they can help other people with the thoughts and ideas that they have. Do Palestinians struggle to find jobs that they want or that they've even trained for? Well, let me put it this way. If I got your question right, there is a big gap between what the educational system is giving and what the market is requesting from the Palestinian youth. So nowadays, people have to, when you are graduating from the university, you are in front of several choices and not all of them are very pleasant. You can be a worker at the Israeli construction market. You can work in a governmental job that might not give you the personal ambition of developing yourself and your job. And the last choice for me might be being a change maker who creates their own job, create their own project and give job opportunities for other people and youth from their age. I don't know if I'm really answering your question, but uh, I think that Palestinian youth now are facing the reality that the jobs given or the opportunities given by the local market is not suitable or is not equitable to their ambition. So they have to come up with something new. And if you, if you relate to the community of Ramallah, for example, it's a community where people go to, to live, to work, because there are some resources that are being given by the government, but also by other international organizations who think that this is where the project should start. Tell us a little bit about your project, Storytel. Okay, Storytel was, actually it's not a separate, it wasn't a separate project. It was an initiative that one of the co-founders of Ibtikar participated in a training. And then we had to, you know, he had to submit a sort of initiative for the organization which we trained with, which he trained with. And what we did is that we made the benefit or transfer the benefit for some of our trainees. Well, it's a complicated story, but what we did is that we worked for one of our projects with 45 Palestinian women entrepreneurs from Bethlehem. So we told the funding organization that we have this group of women, which we can work with them for storytelling, to, to train them how to tell their stories, the stories of their projects, how they succeeded, when did they fail, and how to put this in a narration that might be appealing for the one who is reading their stories. Mm. And it will be at the same time a marketing tool for them and for their projects. 
How does Palestine compare to other countries in the world? Are, are the youth moving forward or being left behind? As a youth, and to be frank enough with you, I think that youth are left behind. And you have to, to fight, as a youth, you have to fight very strongly to be able to find a place in the Palestinian decision-making level, organizational level, and even educational level. I think it's an inherent way of looking at Palestinian youth. We think that the older you are, the more wise you are. And as, so, as soon as you are a young man or woman, you cannot be a decision maker and you can't be responsible for other people and other visions, future visions. That's why we tend to, to go to the older people to be in charge of us and in charge of our decision making processes. And this is, for me, is left in making youth left behind. Just to give you an example, I had to attend many, many, many training uh, programs outside Palestine and get many diplomas and certificate to be able to come to my community and convince them that I can do something and work for my people. So it's not easy at all, uh, based on my personal experience, to convince the people that, yes, you are able to do something. COVID has hit Bethlehem. How have you been able to respond to COVID? Well, I think Bethlehem is one of the places that were worst affected by COVID-19 because of the idea of tourism. And uh, the economic here is based on tourism. Thanks to the efforts of the local trainees of Ibtikar, we could transfer all our programs from the real world into the virtual space. And this happened early February last 2020 when all our programs were translated into the virtual space and we could continue the work almost as, as regular as possible. But uh, I'm sure we have lost many chances because of COVID-19. You know, training person to person is much different from using the virtual space. Mm -hmm. And as a new organization, yes, the trainers try their best to make the virtual space a home for the trainees, but it cannot be in any way, you know, equitable to training on the ground. Are you hopeful for the future of the youth? I'm very much hopeful. If I'm not, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing today, not only for Ibtikar, but for other entities that I'm trying to work with. I'm really hopeful, but I'm, let's say, afraid of what's coming. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid of, the, of a moment which might come and we might have to leave the country. I'm afraid of a moment in which there will be no chances at all, in which we will be, we will be done with hoping. I'm only afraid of these moments. Why do you do what you do? I am do it because I believe in myself and in my people. And I think that we should be in a better place. It's not what we used to be. We are a country and we are people of civilization and we can come back to our roots and be as successful as we were. And that's what inspires me to do what I'm doing. What's your hope for the future? I hope that one day will come in which youth will be decision makers for my country because I think by this we will be in a better place. But I hope that we will be able to, you know, to, to live freely, to live without being afraid of going to somewhere, without being afraid of being shot, let me say, mm -hmm. To live in security and freedom place. Place of freedom and security, sorry. Uh, what's your website and Facebook page for people who'd like to know more? Well, it's Ibtikar Palestine and Ibtikar Palestine, both in Arabic and English. This is how we write it on Facebook. Okay, Salama, thank you much. Thank you very much for your time also.